Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome, Instagram. Welcome, Facebook. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you are joining this live broadcast from. I am your host, Pastor Esther Obele. Okay, so this is day three of Gathering Clouds. This is day three of Gathering Clouds. And our theme is you have what you say. You can have what you say or what you say is what you have. More specifically, what you say is what you have. This devotional is going to be going on for 30 days, and this is the third day of the devotional. Our key text for this devotional, or for the title of this devotional, is taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 3, that says, If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves on the earth. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves on the earth. And the point is that, where clouds gather and then you are sure that there's going to be a downpour. So if you have been experiencing famine in your life or you have been experiencing drought or experiencing, um, um, what's that word now, barrenness in your life, you know, perhaps it could be that you have not gathered enough clouds. You know, I have seen this work for me personally. I'm not just talking about it. You know, this is it. one topic that I am passionate, like 100% passionate about because I have just experienced prayer. I'm passionate about prayer. I'm passionate about gathering clouds, which is um, um, speaking, making confessions of your faith. You know, and the reason is that I have seen it work in my life. Like I saw it work in my life at the time of my Christianity, where that, when I didn't think, I didn't know that this was what Christian, this Christian faith was about. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, everyone joining us. Good morning. It's good to have you back here once again. So these are things I'm speaking teaching this from a place of experience because I have seen this, you know, work in my life. I've experienced it in um, different levels and on different um, dimensions. And every time it comes to me fresh, okay, like it just blows my mind completely. Glory to God. So gathering clouds, when we're going to the, the whole idea is that the more you speak the word of God, it may not happen overnight, but you will gather it gradually, gradually until one day it will surely rain on the earth. And I told you that the things of the gospel, the things, the principles of the kingdom of God, that they are scientific, which means that it is possible, like it is possible for you to know the steps to take. And when you apply those steps, you will get a desired outcome. You know the outcome that you want, and then you will get that desired outcome when you follow the steps of the principles glory to god okay so um we're going to be um taking today's topic is gaining the mastery over your confessions yesterday we talked about the high priest of our confession and that is one topic that has a great impact in my life and this today now we're talking about gaining the mastery over your confessions gaining the mastery we're still looking at hebrews chapter 4 remember yesterday we read hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 that says that jesus is the apostle that we have to consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession and the word profession is confession is the same thing as confession so the scripture in hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 told us that jesus is the pioneer of this lifestyle of confession and not only is it the pioneer of it that Jesus also is the represents he he represents us based on our confession. Jesus would only represent us based on our confession. All right, and then. We also looked at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, that says that we seen that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us 
hold fast to our confession. And so today we're talking about gaining mastery. The Bible tells us to hold fast to our profession, to hold pa- fast to it. Like to ho- how do you hold fast to something? You would not let go. Like you take a hold of it and do not let go. It says hold fast to your profession. Hold fast to your profession. And and I'm saying that for you to be able to hold fast to your profession, you need to gain the mastery over your confessions glory to god you need to gain the mastery over your confessions so taking it a notch higher we're just going to be looking at the professions that we're supposed to be holding fast onto you know for instance we see that um the bible tells us that first and foremost of course you have to understand that the bible you have to you have to hold fast to that belief that the bible the full integrity of the bible the bible is the inspired word of god if you still have it at the back of your mind that oh it could be written by men or it, of course it's written by men but inspired men that were inspired by the holy spirit so if, so eventually the entire Bible was written by one person who is the Holy Spirit from um, ages to ages. He used different men quite right, but the Spirit of God is eternal. Glory to God. So you have to settle it in your heart that the Word of God is the inspired Word of God. The Bible is the inspired Word of God and that the Bible has full integrity. If you're going to be accommodating thoughts, you know, from different areas concerning the Bible and they tell you, oh no, it may not be true. You know, there are fallible men that wrote the Bible and then these, they said this because of this and all of that. You might not be able to get the the benefits that you're supposed to get from the Bible. You have to understand that the Bible, the full integrity of the Bible, like hold fast to your confession concerning the full integrity of the Bible. All right. Hold fast to your confession of the absolute integrity of the Bible. Declare in the name of Jesus, I hold fast to my confession of the absolute integrity of the Bible. You know, as we're teaching and any confession comes up, I'm going to say it and I expect you wherever you are, speak it out loud because you don't know where next or um, how you're going to be able to come across such a confession again. So just declare it. If you have a notebook, write down the confessions that you hear. And in your spare time, I told you, you give time just the same way you give time to prayer. You give time to study of the word. You ought to also give time for your confessions. Glory to God. All right. So we hold fast to the confession of the absolute integrity of the bible also hold fast to your confession of the new creation of receiving life the life and nature of god declare they say i am the new creation in christ jesus i am a new creation in christ jesus all things are past they will behold everything is now new declare it say i am the new creation in christ jesus what that means is that you have the divine life of god cursing through your body through your blood through every area of your life that means that you cannot be disadvantaged when you make these declarations you be, you make it to become a reality in your life oh i am the new creation in christ jesus i am the new creation in christ jesus i receive the life and nature of god declare i have the life and nature of god glory to god i have the life and nature of god i have the life and nature of god you see the entire bible is actually something that you know when you read the bible it's not just about head knowledge as much as it depends on you try every way possible you know to make the confessions that you see the words that you see when it says that this is who you are in Christ make the confessions like declare it out loud oh wow the bible says i'm rich i'm rich i'm rich glory to god make these declarations like as much as it depends on you don't just read it and leave it the christianity is known as the great confession do you understand like the bulk of your christianity is about confession let me tell you for for you to be able to get out of any bad habit or any sin that you don't want to be involved in it's not by you mentally acknowledging that oh it is sin oh lord forgive me i'm going to try as much as possible to stop it no it's about you meditating on 
what the word of God says concerning you. And when you see what the word of God says concerning you, what you ought to do in that moment is that you need to speak it. You say it until it manifests into reality. And suddenly one day you you, you, you just realize that a lot has changed about your life. Okay, I'm reading this comment. It says, I've started making right confessions, Pastor, as led by God. Praise God. You should. Yes. Hallelujah. I love that. Right confessions. And the right confessions I would love to emphasize will be a confessions of what the word says you are. You declare, I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. And I have what God says I have. Those are the right confessions. Hallelujah. Okay. So you hold fast to the confession that God is the strength of your life. Declare, you say, I can never, I am not weak. I refuse to be tired. You know, I heard this, I, I had this, um, this um, one man who did this work for me, this job for me. And then when he came, he delayed on delivery of the job, you know. And so I was, while I was telling him, no, you shouldn't be like this. Why would you, why did you delay on the delivery and all that? And it shouldn't be like this so that I can be able to trust you next time to give you other jobs. And then he said, oh, pastor, this life, eh, I just tire, oh, I just tire, you know. I just tire. I said, you know, go tire, oh. That's what I told you. I said, how you go tired? If you're tired, I don't reach for you to die. That means that it's time for you to go to heaven. If you're tired of life, then it's time for you to die. Do you understand? These are confessions that people bring into their lives. And then Satan begins to use to work against them. And the next thing you know, what's happening, you hear that the person is dead. No, don't be tired. You know, don't say this. Oh, I'm just, oh, I'm mentally exhausted. Oh, I'm just, you know, like you say these things and it looks as if it sounds so, so touch and so cool. No, 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 no. No, God is the strength of my life. Declare, say, I, God is the strength of my life. God is the strength of my life. That means that it, it does not depend on my, my physical abilities. It doesn't depend on my physical strength, you know, or my, my capacity to carry it physically. But God is the strength of my life. I cast all my cares upon him for he cares for me. Surely he has borne my sicknesses and carried my diseases. By the stripes of Jesus I am healed. Therefore none of the diseases of the Gentiles shall come upon me. I am living in divine health. I hope you're making this uh, declarations with me. I am living in the divine health. Glory to God. Now, let's get into what we're talking about. You've made all of these confessions, and I know that you agree with me. As I share these confessions with you, I know that you agree with me because your spirit is telling you, yes, this is the word of God. This is who I am. But then the, or the other side of your mind, you're thinking, God is the strength of my life, but I actually literally feel weak. The Bible says that I, am, I have divine health. But then why do I feel symptoms in my body? Do you see that? And then the moment you finish saying with this broadcast and you're done with the broadcast and then suddenly let's say you have symptoms in your body and then you go out and then somebody asks you, oh, how are you today? And you've forgotten about your confessions. And the next minute you're saying, oh, I'm having a headache. Oh, my body is aching me. Oh, this is happening to me. Oh, I don't even know what's going on. Oh, I'm just so tired of everything. You see, this is the danger of a dual confession. This is why the Bible says that you need to hold fast to your profession. The dangers of a dual confession. I discovered in my life that when things were not going the way it should have been going and I'd been making confessions, I discovered that I'd been making dual confessions. I'd been making double confessions, two confessions. I'd been confessing the absolute truthfulness and integrity of the word of God on the one hand. But then at the same time, I was making a confession that I was not healed. When I began to describe the symptoms, when I began to describe the situation, then I began to make confessions that I was not healed. If you had asked me, do you believe that by the stripes of Jesus you are healed? I would say, yes, absolutely. I believe that by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed. But the next minute I'll say, oh, my head is banging. <laughs> In the next breath, I would have said, oh, but the pain is still there. I can feel the pain. The second confession nullifies the first. And do you know what I learned? 
I learned that your emotions, your feelings, what you actually believe about the confessions, it's, it works. Whether for or against you. I learned that. That it works for or against you. So when you're making the confession, you can feel the pain. The pain is more real to you than the fact that the, by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. After all, you were not there when Jesus was crucified on the cross. So the pain is much more real to you. And then you begin to describe it. Something I learned a long time ago. Learn to speak God's word more than you are describing the situation. I found out that in description of the situation, you make an effort to make the person listening to you to believe you. And when you're making an effort to make them believe you, it shows that you are convinced about something. See, if I wasn't convinced about this topic, I would not, you know, say it with so much passion or talk about it with so much passion, right? So many times when we're explaining the situation or describing the, the situation, we are saying it with so much passion that we want the next person to believe us. But you see, when they believe you, what is the extent to that? You bring back the same reality that you're trying to get rid of into your life. This is the danger of a dual confession. Confession. Yes, the word says without wavering. Without wavering. No dual confessions in your life. Glory to God. In reality, you see two confessions. First, a confession of perfect healing and redemption in Christ. And then the next, in the next breath, you see that people are talking about it as if redemption and healing was not even a fact. You are so focused. They tell you, oh, don't worry. Pray about it. They have been praying about it. So what's the point of you describing your situation to me, really, if you have already prayed about it? What was the point? Because if you prayed about it and you believed the prayers and you believe the words that you spoke, you believe the absolute integrity of the word of God, there would not have been any need for you to call my attention again or draw my attention again to that thing, to the, the thing that had happened. Glory to God. So you have to hold fast to your profession. Hold fast to your confession. You need to stay. Learn to have just one confession and that one confession only. I found out that you do not need to even convince anyone of your situation, of your negative circumstance. You don't need to, they don't need to know about it. You don't need to convince anyone about it. How about if every time you speak, you're speaking something about, and I'm not just talking about positive words. I'm careful not to use positive words because positive words could mean that somebody is just, um, what's that word now? Um, motivating you. See, motivational speakers are not necessarily kingdom preachers. Motivational speakers do not necessarily speak the word of God or preach the word of God. A motivational speaker could tell you something that is out of the Bible, in fact, but makes sense to your intellect, makes sense to your natural being, but not a spiritual truth. All right. But there are there are some motivational speakers who are also preachers, like a preacher. When you listen to a preacher who is speaking life from the Bible, you are motivated. You are inspired. Now, there's a difference because this is inspiration by the word. This is also inspiration by the spirit. It's not just a mind inspiration. It's not just on this level. All right. So learn to have just one confession only one confession. If you confess that God supplies all of your needs, then you must not nullify that confession by saying, oh yes, God supplies all my needs, but I can't pay my rent right now. I can't pay the telephone bill right now. Where's the money going to come from? Faith would hold fast to the confession of the word of God in spite of all odds. Hold fast to it in the conf You have to give glory to God. Keep thanking God. Father, I thank you because I know it's done. I thank you because I know it's done. The moment you think about the fact that, oh, there is a lack somewhere. Oh, Lord, I thank you because I have received all of my needs met in the mighty name of Jesus. Sense knowledge would hold fast to the confession of physical evidences, what I can see. 
But the Bible talks about Abraham. He said he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. The Bible says that when you look at the circumstances, when you focus on the circumstances, that what is happening to you is that you are staggering in your faith. You are staggering at the promises of God. That means you're not sure of the word of God. You are staggering at the word of God. You are not sure of it. Saints knowledge will hold fast to the confession of physical evidences. And the Bible says that when you do that, your faith is weak. If you accept physical evidences against the word of God, then you nullify the word of God. That's the reason why Jesus is the apostle of our profession. He's the, he's the, uh, what's the, the high priest of our profession. He can only act based on your words. Glory to God. But if I hold fast to my confession that the word of God is true, that by the stripes of Jesus I am healed, that God supplies all of my leads, you hold fast to that confession in the face of adverse circumstances, in the face of apparent contradictions, you hold fast to it. And let me tell you, Jesus is bound to make it good. I told you, your faith is released through words. Hallelujah. Many believers have failed when things become difficult. They have failed because they lost their confession. They made dual confessions. They made the first confessions, but then they looked at the circumstances. They looked at the waves. Remember Peter? He says, Lord, bid me to come and I would come. And the Lord said, come. And then he got out of the ship. He jumped on into the water and he didn't sink. He began to walk on water and he was excited. He said, wow, look at me. I'm walking on water. And he kept going. But then suddenly the wind became boisterous. He looked around the waves. He looked down at the water. The water was, you know, it was rumbling. And oh my, my goodness, he was scared. He probably looked inside and the way the waves were, he was wondering how come he was walking on the calm of the sea, but yet he could see that the wind was not even calm. Sorry, the water was not calm. He was wondering. The moment he began to, uh, to regard the circumstances, he began to sink. He took his eyes away from the sacrifice of Jesus. He took away his eyes from the fact that the master had bid him to come. He even forgot about the fact that master, the father, the, the, uh, the God of the universe, the one who created the waves and the water and everything was right there with him. And he was the one that said, come. He forgot it. He began to regard the circumstances, then he began to sink. So when the sun is shining brightly, you see believers, their confessions are vigorous, strong, and clear. But when the storms come, the testings come, the adversary taking advantage of them, they give up their testimony. Every time you confess disease and weakness and failure, you magnify the adversary above the father, just like Peter did, and you destroy your own confidence in the word. Because you will say, oh, the word started working. And then the next thing you say, oh, it stopped working. And then you blame the word of God. Then you blame God. <laughs> but you forget it's because of your dual confession that is nullifying the word of God. You have to hold fast to your confession. You have to be, take, make, take mastery. When it comes to this work of confessing God's word, you have to master it. You have to master it. Hold fast to your confession in the face of apparent ordeal. Study the word of God until you know what your rights are. And then hold fast to them. When you say, I am born of God and I have overcome the world, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Glory to God. Some people make confessions without any foundations. Don't be like that. Don't just say, okay, uh, Pastor E said we should just make this confession and I'm going to make it. Go back. If you hear any confession that we make here and you don't know where it's coming from, go back to the scriptures. I thank God for the internet. I thank God for all the resources available for us. You can research any scripture at all. There are tons and tons of information on any scripture at all. You probably can even pre preach better than me. Glory to God. All right. But make, go back and make these studies like study. 
you know, don't just stay and make confessions like that, you know, out of the blues, because when the adversary comes and whips you and beats you badly, you would not have anything to say. The word of God has to dwell deep inside of you. When Satan comes, you say it is written. It is written. Remember when Satan came and uh, to try to tempt Jesus, Jesus said to him, it is written the first time. And then he said to him again, it is written the second time. But the third time, Jesus turned to Satan and said, it is said. Do you understand what it means? It means that Jesus told him, listen, I'm not just telling you what is in the Bible. I am saying it to you right now. And once the Rema word comes out, that's the end. And the, the, the devil flee, uh, 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 ran away, left. He went away. Glory to God. So know what your rights are in the Bible. If you know that God says that you are healed, then know that you are healed. Make your confession after you have studied. Glory to God. Nay, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors. You can make your confession. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You can make your confession. Stand by your confession through thick and thin, through the good reports and the, old, uh, the, the, the evil reports. Know that your confession is according to the word of God. The Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 says, And they overcame him by the word, blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Glory to God. Now let's make a little bit of, of confessions, a few confessions before uh, we round up for today. And before we make the confessions, yesterday I mentioned to you that it's important that you spend time praying loud in other tongues. And so I am making the assumptions that you have a spe specific prayer time you know, each day that you pray in tongues, that you have a specific time every single day where you pray in tongues. That's what I'm making the assumptions. I'm assuming that you spend time praying in tongues and so that when you come here to make confessions, it is not something that is out of the blues. Glory to God, because you're applying um, energy, spiritual energy to your to your words. Glory to God. All right. Today's confessions, we are talking about pleasing God. And um, just before we start, I would love for us to just pray in tongues in a little, a few seconds before we would go into that, just to practice what we have said. Okay. Let's pray in tongues a bit. Bobo so shake in animo amuko so takiso litu se nin talaba bakushe ne kito la luce lizo soko sinenimo koshati kotalipo baruko sheke telemunde lizo sabo so sheke suse ketalama in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So our confessions, we are making confessions concerning pleasing God today. Our first confession is taken from John chapter 8, verse 29. So say this with me. I always do those things that please God. I always do the things that please God. I always do the things that please God. Say this is the motivating force of my Christian life. Doing things that please God. So it's not about you thinking that you want to please God. But say that you will please God and you will. Glory to God. You will align. Everything in your life will align. Say, I am the father pleaser. I am the father pleaser. There is no other father but God our father. I am the father pleaser. I do all things. I do all of those things that please my father in Jesus' name. Our next confession is taken from 1 John chapter 3, verse 22. Say this with me. Glory to God. Whatever I ask of God, I receive of him. Because I keep his commandments and I do those things pleasing to his sight, pleasing in his sight. Whatever I ask, declare, say, all my prayers are answered because I, am, I do things pleasing to God. All my prayers are answered because I please God. How about that? All my prayers are answered because I please God. Hallelujah. Declare it. Say this with me. Say, all my prayers are answered because I please God. Amen. Answers to prayers are conditioned on doing things that please God. Hallelujah. If your prayers are not answered, you have to seek to know him more. 
It's possible that you're not doing things according to the system, uh, the things of the kingdom of God. And if you're not, you can speak yourself into reality, into that reality. Glory to God. Our next confession is taken from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. It talks about Abraham. It says that Abraham had this testimony that he pleased God. So make this declaration. Say, in the name of Jesus, I have this testimony that I please God. Hallelujah. I have this testimony that I please God. And I just want to um, say, chip this in. This is not part of our confession because we're talking about confessions of pleasing God. But this just um, came to my mind. And when it comes to my mind like this, I will just say it because I don't know if it will come to my mind another time. All right. I realize that a lot of Christians are apprehensive about making it to heaven or going to hell. But listen to me, just like every other thing in the Bible, just like every other thing in the Christian walk, you go to hell or you go to heaven by faith, based on your faith. So if you want to make it to heaven, you want it to be a sealed deal, make the declaration in the name of Jesus, I do not miss heaven. I do not miss heaven. In the name of Jesus, my whole life, spirit, soul, and body has aligned with the gospel scheme. My spirit, my whole, my whole life, spirit, soul, body have aligned with the gospel scheme. So you declare, I make heaven. I will not make, I will not lose. No, I will not go to hell. I cannot go to hell. I'm a child of God. I please God. My life pleases God. Hallelujah. Begin to, any time that you fear anything in your life, there's any form of fear that comes into your mind, I want you to nullify the fear with the word of God. Declare in the name of Jesus, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but he has given me a sound mind. So you declare, I have a sound mind. I have a sound mind. The sound mind that thinks that has co-perception with God, with what the word of God says concerning me. I have a sound mind. I have a sound mind. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. So it is my heart's desire to please God. It's my heart desire to please God. My bold ambition that I might have this same testimony. Declare, say, I please God with all of my life. I please God with all of my life, all of my time, my talent, my money, my everything. I please God in every area of my life, spirit, soul, and body. I please God. Hallelujah. I love this. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, it is in, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Say, my faith is working. My faith is working. Declare, say, I have stubborn faith. My faith does not give up. I walk in faith and I please God. Hallelujah. I walk by faith and I please God. I walk by faith and I please God. Say, I boldly live the life of faith. I boldly live the life of faith. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says, I live by the faith of the Son of God. And then he says that the word is near me, even in my mouth and in my heart. That is the word of faith. The word of faith is in my mouth. Says, So the word of faith is in my mouth. Then um, Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your word is in my spirit. Your word is established in my heart. I am seeing the dividends of the word of God, the workings of the word of God in my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you for joining the broadcast this morning. Remember, you have to hold fast to your confession of faith. Pick your words, like just sit down, write out, your, have a book of confessions. I do have you know, I have a book of confessions. Have a book of confessions. Sit down and write out your confessions concerning any area of your life that you are struggling with. So if you're struggling with your finances, write out all scriptures concerning finances, all right, and declare them. Christ has been, um, what's that scripture now? It says that Christ was poor so that he was, he became poor so that by his by, so that through his poverty, I might become rich. So you declare, I am rich. I am rich. I am who God says I am. I am rich. I am who God says I am. I am rich. I have what God says I have. I have divine life coursing through my, my veins, through my body, through my being. I have what God says I have. I have eternal life. I can do what God says I can do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Write them down and say these things. You see, I can say some of these things without even looking at them because I've mastered my confession 
Okay, over time I say them, I say them, I say them, and then now it has even become like something that I just say out of my mind. I am born of God. Let me tell you something. There's something I've noticed about the scriptures. The scriptures have like um there are some things that I found out that some some scriptures um work out in my life for instance i suffer like I, because i fast a lot you know and i'm not eating food and i'm not drinking water i suffer spasms in my uh, muscles you know i i suffer this things occasionally it will just come and i know it's because i'm not drinking enough water or i'm not eating enough food you know and i begin to have all these muscle pulls and spasms you know in different areas of my body you know and then i remember what I would suffer this in like maybe in the middle of the night, throughout the night, you know, I would just be, you know, doing that. Then I have to find like bottles of water to drink. And then I begin to drink and drink and drink. And it will still be there. Like I'll suffer it until one day I ask God, I say, Lord, help me through this situation. And you know, the scripture that dropped in my heart is that I am born of God and I've overcome the world. You will not believe it. I don't know how that even works with that, how that confession even works with those, with the spasms. But do you know that that is the magic, like I, I don't have to use the word magic, you know, but that's the, the word. That is the, that's the word, you know. I just begin to say it. The moment I start to suffer this uh, spasms in my, in my body, you know, the next thing I just hear, uh, I say is, I am born of God and I have overcome the world. And you will not believe it. Like almost immediately, the spasms cease. I don't have to drink water. I have to rem remind my muscles that I'm the one in charge here. I'm the one in charge here. That's what I do. I'm born of God and I've overcome the world. That's what I say. I'll say it over and over again. I'm born of God and I've overcome the world. And before you know what's happening, the spasms stop. Okay, you got the same too, right? <laughs> You know, so just try it. I don't know if you work with, with for someone else with the scriptures, but I'm telling you, it works for me all the time. I don't even need to do any prayer. That particular confession of faith, it works. Like my muscles have to re realize that I am the one in charge. Glory to God. I'm born of God. I have overcome the world and the world systems. Even in your finances, it can work. If you're at a job and it feels as if you are so, you know, like all your finances, like your, your, your hope is on the salary every month. You don't have any other means of sustenance. And if the salary does not come, you have no hope. And even when the salary comes, the money is not even enough. Why don't you start to make confessions? I am born of God. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world and its financial systems. Glory to God. I have overcome the world and its financial systems. Hold fast to your profession. Glory to God. Master, gain the mastery over your confessions. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice as they have embarked on this journey of changing their confessions and gathering clouds, Lord. We ask you to help them, oh God, uproot any thoughts and imaginations, any high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God in their minds. Let those things be uprooted. Those strongholds that stop the word of God from flowing in, those strongholds that stop the light of the glorious gospel from going and pen penetrating right in, in the name of Jesus, those strongholds be uprooted. And I declare that their minds and their hearts are open for the scriptures to be written afresh on them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, I thank you for any form of um anything that is limiting them in the name of jesus i speak freedom i speak freedom in your mind freedom in your body freedom every area of your life i declare in the name of jesus that where you have been feeling like there's a lot of things going on in your mind and it feels as if there's a lot of chaos going on in your heart or in your mind in the name of jesus i declare that there's no more chaos i speak peace to your mind i speak peace to your mind i speak peace to your mind right now in the name of jesus quiet in jesus mighty name you evil spirit causing all form, manner of confusion to God's people. I curse you and I command you be gone right now. And I put a seal of protection around the people of God right now in the name of Jesus. And I declare that the evil one shall not touch you ever again in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have a blessed day today. See you tomorrow once again at 8 a.m. I have been coming early. You can see, actually, I cannot take credit for coming early. 
the Lord has been helping me. You will not believe it. Like literally he wakes me up. Like the other day, it was yesterday or two days ago, I felt a tap on my back. <laughs> He's been waking me up, like just wake up. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so the Lord is helping me right now. It's not me. He's helping me. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. Like he's, he's, I find that he's even more serious about this. You know, I, I know I wanted to take two weeks um, holiday, right? I wanted to take like at least two weeks because I wanted to write. And then the Lord said, no, just have a weekend off. And that's it. He, he wouldn't release me. He's my boss. And so we had to start this, um, this new devotional like three days later we just ended on thursday and then we started on monday that was because the lord spoke to me you know and he said no started and even when i felt like i was going to be tired about it he would wake me up like he's been the one helping me you know so i hope it continues thank you lord for helping me thank you and i pray that you help others as well so that we can make the most of our time together all right so have a blessed day today and see you again tomorrow bye bye